Why, hello there, my Tanookers. Today, I would like to show off some of these rare used games that I found at one of my nearby stores called Vintage Stock. I'm pretty sure it's a franchise that only exists in the Midwest area, so you may or may not have a vintage stock near you. But anyways, they have they mostly have things like books, movies, video games, manga, posters, things like that. But particularly, they have a lot of used games, and specifically, they have this one bargain bin area where they just have really cheap, as you can see, really cheap games there that range pretty much from $1 to $3. And most of it's just stuff that really is valued at $1 to $3, but sometimes if you, if you, look, through the, if you look through it enough, you find something that is getting really undervalued, and I'm guessing it's just because they don't want to take the time to sift through all of them. Maybe they deem it not cost-effective to take the time to, to have employees sift through all of them just to find a handful that are worth more than $3. But anyways, I have a fun time looking through it, and I found some pretty cool things, so I would like to show it off today. I am showing off PS2 games and PS3 games today. So. First up, I'm going through the PS2 games, and then I'll get to the PS3 games later. So first up is Mortal Kombat Armageddon for the PlayStation 2. And of course, if you're uh, familiar with me or my channel, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty uh, big fan of Mortal Kombat. However, the only Mortal Kombat games I've played are Mortal Kombat 1 and then 9, 10, and 11. So... Everything in between Mortal Kombat 1 and 9, I never really got to play, and the PlayStation, uh, the PlayStation 2 era is included in that, so I never got to play any of the PlayStation 2 Mortal Kombat, so I'm pretty excited to check this one out. I do want to note, though, that I'm not a big fan at all of how they have these games packaged, so obviously this is where the disc is supposed to go in these cases, right, but how they have it... I'm not going to recreate it for you because I really don't like it, but basically, you see how uh, if you open this up all the way, you have space to put something underneath this plastic. This is normally where box art would go, right? They have the disc inside of this, and then they have the whole thing covered in a plastic wrap, so that way you can see the disc and know what game it is, because obviously if it was inside of this, and they were selling it like this, they would have to put some sort of placeholder box art or some sort of title on it. And I guess they don't want to take the time or spend the money to do that. But why this is really concerning to me is that having these employees shove a disc underneath this plastic and have the, have the reflective side against this uh, hard plastic, it makes me worried that it might get scratched or something. But I'm sure most of these work, or I mean, they should all work, otherwise I'm getting my money back. But uh, you can see that this is actually pretty good condition, and uh, I was actually looking forward to the fact that I didn't have to fix my hair for this video since my face wouldn't be in it, but now I realize that you can see a lot of me in the reflection, so just ignore that. So anyways, that was Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Next up, another $2.99 game, and this is, whoa, where is it? Well, I guess of Kane Soul Reaver, and... I actually didn't really know about this franchise very much until kind of recently. I didn't really learn about this series until this past year, honestly. And recently, I had someone on Twitch telling me about how much he likes this franchise and how good it is. Specifically, he said he plays it for the lore, so I'd like to see how interesting of a universe this really is. And it's only fitting that after I show Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, I show... Also for $2.99. Look at see of Kane Soul Reaver 2. So it would be cool to play these back to back. And I'm just really excited to play a whole bunch of PS2 games now because I recently got the device so I can stream PS2 games. And so it just really gives me gives me more motivation to go back and play these old PS2 games I either never got around to finishing or just never finished in the first place. Another $2.99. Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoons. I'm not even sure if Thievius is a real word, but it is here. And of course, Sly Cooper, it's a franchise that people are very fond of. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to come back. Uh, the, de the developers have moved on to other franchises. But Sly Cooper, the games that do exist, still exist. And 
that'll be interesting to start playing. The, the art style holds up pretty well too because it's a very, it's a very art stylized game and so the graphics have actually aged pretty well with that so next up okay i know this is some random licensed game for the ps2 and the ps2 is no stranger to loads of random licensed games but i was actually talking to someone on twitch last night about this game and they were <laughs> they were talking about this game they, they were talking about this game and i told them just because of that i'm going to pick this game up and well first of all i'm a pretty big ghost rider fan but uh, this game itself is also surprisingly good for a licensed game because it actually plays sort of like a God of War game. And uh, if you'll notice, it's actually not published by Activision. So licensed games during these era published by Activision were notoriously just cheap cash grabs. But this one is actually not Activision. And like I said, it's, it's surprisingly similar to God of War. And I'm already a big Ghost Rider fan, so I think this will be <laughs> funny to play at the very least. Obviously, you'll get more value out of this if you are a fan of Ghost Rider, like I am. So, this one is probably valued at $3, really, but it has more value to me. But anyways, keep in mind that also, if you were to buy these online, you would have to pay for shipping and everything, too. Next up is... I had to open that one because I forgot what was in this one. This one is... I forgot how much this was, but I think this one was $3 as well. A JRPG, Tales of the Abyss. So... I do like JRPGs quite a bit, but I've never played any of the Tales series, and people typically talk about it pretty fondly, but the Tales franchise has never really done anything to lure me in, because to me, just from an outsider looking at it, it looks pretty much like the most generic JRPG ever, but it is an action JRPG, it's not turn-based, so that might make it a bit more of a unique thing than what I'm expecting, and uh... This Tales of the of the Abyss actually got ported to the 3DS. I remember it was one of the 3DS's earliest games. It got a port of this, but it's always cool to play it on the original hardware. And like I said, it would be a good introduction, I think, for the franchise. I know a lot of people typically either point to this one as the best one in the franchise, or maybe not the best, but the most definitive. They point to this one or the one for GameCube. So anyways... I have two more PS2 games I want to show off, and these two I actually did not pick up from the bargain bin. These two I actually specifically looked at. I, I specifically, there, every time I go through there, I specifically search for certain games to see if they have them. And so these game, these are games I was just, I was specifically searching for, which is why I didn't mind spending a bit more for these. Because these were not in the bargain bin, they were just in the regular used game section. So anyways, first up, well first up out of these two, Onimusha 2. And if you've seen my Onimusha 1 playthrough, you'll know that I enjoy Onimusha 1 quite a bit. And if you haven't seen that, do check that out. But uh, anyways, apparently Onimu there were like four Onimusha games plus this... Smash Bros. style spinoff, so it was a pretty big, it was a pretty big franchise or a pretty big IP for Capcom for a while, at least briefly in the PS2 era, and then nothing after that. But I could have gotten this game way earlier, but I specifically decided to wait because I played Onimusha One by the port because last year Onimusha Warlords got ported. And so that's how I played it. And so I was expecting Capcom to port the rest of the Onimusha games too, naturally, right? But I don't know, maybe Onimusha World Wars didn't sell well enough to merit them porting the rest. So uh, I decided I would stop waiting for them to port it because it looks like they're not doing that. And so I will just play the rest of the Onimusha games on the original hardware. So this should be pretty exciting. And of course, this, since this is the original box art, which is in really good condition, might I add... I can show off the back side too. Okay, and speaking of good box art, Castlevania Lament of Innocence, uh, in very good condition. And of course, the box art for a lot of these Castlevania games are just gorgeous because they're made by one of my favorite artists, Ayami. Kojima, Ayami Kojima, not to be confused with Hideo Kojima, but uh, her art is just amazing on these Castlevania boxes. Looks like something you'd find on some sort of 
higher plane, some higher dimension. But uh, I'm actually really excited to play this because recently, well, last year, there was a, uh, last year during Steam's Halloween sale, I picked up Castlevania Lords of Shadow on Steam. And I just recently started playing that, and I'm about five hours into the game, and I'm pretty put off by its lack of gothic aesthetic, by its lack of dark atmosphere, because when I play a Castlevania game, I obviously Lords of Shadow is its own thing. It, it exists in a different universe. It's not canon to the rest of the Castlevania games prior. That's not what bothers me. I'm, I'm completely down for a new rebooted universe and everything, but it's just... When I play a Castlevania game, I'm expecting a very specific itch to be scratched. I'm expecting something very dark, something very gothic. It literally has castle in the name. I expect to be going through these castle environments, right? But uh, through my five hours into Lords of Shadow, and you would even expect, even if you knew nothing about Castlevania, if you were to play a game with a subtitle like Lords of Shadow, you would expect something really dark. But it's more high fantasy than anything. It feels more like Lord of the Rings or something like that. So, pretty much all it made me do is want to play some of these older 3D Castlevanias. Because I've heard some of the music from the PS2 Castlevanias, and it's amazing. So, I, I can tell the atmosphere is going to be very good in this, just based off the music that I've heard. And I'm very happy to have found this with the original box art. And the main character here on the, on the box art is Leon Belmont who is the first Belmont, well, the first Belmont that's relevant to the timeline. He's, he's the one that starts the line of vampire hunters, so this is pretty much the origin story of the Belmont line. Okay, so those are the PS2 games I've been wanting to show off, and now I have three PS3 games I would also like to show. So, here we go, a 299 one. This is a Transformers War for Cybertron, not to be confused with Transformers Fall of Cybertron. The reason I picked this up, aside from it being super undervalued here, is that Transformers Fall of Cybertron is one of my favorite games ever. It's, it's really cool, especially if you like Transformers, and they really nailed the aesthetic and everything. And I'm a little biased towards Fall of Cybertron because you get to play as Grimlock for part of it. That's my, those are my favorite parts in the game. But anyways, Fall of Cybertron is actually the sequel to War of Cybertron. And so, it's only fitting that I play this, considering Fall of Cybertron is one of my favorite games ever. It doesn't need, you don't need to play this before Fall of Cybertron, especially if you're familiar with the Transformers lore like I am. But uh, this was quite the steal, and it's nice to have both Fall of Cybertron and War for Cybertron here. And next up, this is actually a game my brother and I already have. However, I had to pick this up with how cheap it was because I was thinking maybe I could sell it or something. But this is, surely you've heard of it, Demon's Souls, the predecessor of the very popular Dark Souls. Uh, it doesn't really need much of an introduction. My brother has actually played through this already, and I watched him play through it. Pretty good game. Uh, that makes it sound like I'm underselling it. Very good game, obviously. Some of the environments in this game are the most nightmare fuel... I've ever seen in a game. But anyways, uh, yeah, we already have this game, so like I said, I just kind of got it because it was super cheap, so maybe I could give it to someone or sell it on eBay or something or just let someone borrow it, etc. But yeah, quite the steal again. And the last game I want to show off today, which is also a PS3 game, is a Suda51 game, Shadows of the Damned. And uh, you can see this is $10. I'm sure it goes for more on things like eBay and Amazon because like most Suda51 games, they're typically kind of niche and so they either don't make many or not many people buy it and so there's never really many in circulation. But uh, if you're familiar with Suda51, he, he has a very particular type of humor which is a bit weird and that seems to permeate through all of his games. You know, Suda51 was actually an undertaker before he got involved with game development. And so that explains why every single one of his games has such big themes of death and things like that, but also has sort of a dark humor to it because, you know, being an Undertaker, you probably 
you being surrounded being surrounded by that kind of workplace all day you probably have a certain lightheartedness when it comes to themes like death and so it's really nice that he was able to put some of his uh, prior experiences in life into his game development so Suda 51 pretty legendary game developer doesn't need much more of an introduction than that and I'm pretty excited to play this so that was my game haul I wanted to show off. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if there are any uh, rare games you have or if there are any kind of rare games I should be looking for next time I go on a used game hunt. And I will see you to later, so bye for now.